Hi, I'm Sherry from Whole Circle Studio and welcome to the Shoreline Shells Block of the Month and Quilt Sew Along. Today I'm going to give you some tips as you begin to make your seventh Shoreline Shells Block, an abstract cone shell. In addition to this video, be sure to refer to the tips included in the pattern as well as the links below to additional video tutorials. We're headed into the second half of making our quilt blocks and if you're making the circle arrangement and you're excited to see your beautiful arrangement of shells come together, you can start assembling your quilt top. I included the download for assembly instructions in this month's email. If you start piecing your quilt blocks together for the circle arrangement, be sure to pay close attention to the instructions so that you don't end up with any tricky partial seams to deal with. Let's get started with this month's block. I have just a few new tips for this month's block. All of the tips I reviewed for previous blocks will definitely be helpful for this one, so be, be sure to go back and review them. I know some of you still may be a little challenged by some of these tricky angles and fabric placement, so let's have a bit of a refresher. Here I am adding section two onto paper piece E for the circle arrangement. The equivalent for the grid arrangement is paper piece K. So I have my one section already filled with the fabric and it is a little tricky, it looks tricky, but let's break this down. Um, so first thing first, what I'll do is just kind of flip it over and I'm gonna continue, um, just kind of, I, mean, I, could, I could do it on the front too, continue the line here and then just kind of flip it over and continue it just as an indicator. And then I'll also do, I'll kind of draw the outline of section two. Um, you can draw as much of it as you want. Um, for this, I'm actually gonna be covering. So I'll fold it back a little, the paper. <clears throat> and then what I'll do is using an old room key, I have an old gift card here. I'm gonna fold back on the line from one to two because I have one covered and I wanna add on two. So I'm just gonna simply fold that line. And again, I could see that line that I had made. I'll just darken it. Um, and here I find it easier to cut the quarter inch seam allowance. I don't have my rotary cutter close by, so I'm just gonna eyeball it and kind of just get some of this extra out of the way, however you feel comfortable. And then let me get the card out. I will then, I have the correct side of the fabric to the correct side of the fabric. This is the fabric I just kind of rough cut that I wanna cover with two. Of course, you can cut using the cutting diagrams or the cutting chart, all the dimensions are in there, but this I just kind of rough cut it. Um, again, correct side to correct side of the fabrics. I'll align the raw edges and then I could see that my marks, as long as what I outlined here is covered by that yellow fabric, that's the new fabric, then I'm good to go. You could see this is pretty big. I rough cut it pretty large, but you can also see by doing this, backwards method is where you can be sometimes a little bit more efficient with your fabric. So this is right on, I know it'll be covered. I would then go ahead, go over to my machine, flip this over, and I'm gonna sew along this line. And again, as I referred to in block or I talked about in the block six video where I reviewed where I start and stop sewing. I would start right here on this on this line right at the end where it intersects when intersects section three and I'll sew right along that line between one and two and for this I like to go all the way to the edge of the paper. If you again if you need a refresher for how I decide where to start and stop sewing be sure to go back and refer to the tips in the video for block six. The link is below. I also, if you still need some extra help figuring out how to arrange your fabric before you sew, go on and check out the videos I did for block three and block six. Again, those links are below. This block does have some long sections to align and to sew up. So here are just some reminders. I like to use my water soluble glue stick to attach any large pieces of loose fabric to my paper. I would typically just glue this down before I trim to the edges, but here I forgot to do that. So I could still certainly go back, just add a little bit of glue. I attach it, I apply it to the paper and then kind of push down 
And again, this I find by doing this, it's less that I'm fighting with when I'm trying to join these longer pieces. The other thing is definitely, I think it's worth my time to take the time to pin. I first like to use my positioning pinning method. If you missed this, check out the video for block five. Once the critical alignments are pinned, that's anywhere where there's a dot or there's two seams aligning, I first concentrate on those and then I add extra pins in between. I find taking the time to pin allows me to really then stay focused on sewing when I get to the machine and I don't have to worry about any raw edges staying aligned too. One other thing about critical alignments for this block I wanna point out. When you're joining, um, once I, J is attached and K, L is attached, the equivalent of this would be C, D to E, F for the circle arrangement. Um, this I'm working on the grid arrangement here. Once those are sewn together, you're then gonna join these two pieces together and you're gonna notice two stars, a star here and a star here. I put these here for you to know where to align. One thing to note is it may look like this star isn't in the right place because it's not right on the seam. This is part of the intended design. For this, the shell wasn't designed for these seams to align. Just simply match up the stars and then you'll have the, it aligned as it was meant. One last tip for this month. When joining the paper pieces, after they're sewn, be sure to use an iron and a clapper if you have one before sewing on the next paper piece so that you can get a really nice flat seam. If you wanna see how I use the iron and clapper and some extra tips, be sure to check out the bonus video for block five. I can't wait to see your block come together. Thanks again for being here and sewing along with us. I'll be back next month with even more tips. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments or something you'd like to share, please let me know. Also, be sure to share your progress on Instagram using the Shoreline Shells hashtags found on the pattern so we can all check out what you're working on. You can also email me photos. My email address can be found in the pattern. I love to see what you're making. See you next month and happy sewing.